Harold, you have your hand up. Do you need help with something? Just keep working with people online. Mr. Gable has his hand up, and I just can't tell if it was an accident or not. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll get there. See how that works out. Given an opportunity, I didn't see anything. Email. Ten seconds. Sir. All in order. The July 5th, 2023 City Council meeting is now called to order. Is there any declaration of conflict of interest? No. 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 Okay. Chad, we are going to swear in the new police chief. Yes, sir. Dr. Yes, I'm going to pass later, so. All right. No, no, they're going to come stand by. <laughs> stand by your man. Yeah, stand by your family, right? Okay, so you got your wife there. Will you introduce him to us? This is Colin, my youngest son, my beautiful wife, Alicia, who uh, supports me. Thank you for letting me do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. It is a family affair around here. All right, you ready to go, sir? Yes, sir. All right, please raise your right hand. I, Joshua Gregory, I, Joshua Gregory, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America, the state of Oregon, the state of Oregon, and the laws of the city of Pure Heart, and the laws of the city of Pure Heart. And that I will, to the best of my ability, and I will, to the best of my ability, faithfully and honestly, faithfully and honestly, perform the duties of police chief. Perform the duties of police chief of the city of your heart, of the city of your heart, Oregon, Oregon, during my term of employment. So help me God. During my term of employment. So help me God. Welcome, Chief. Thank you.
Welcome to the team. So we're excited to have you. Okay. Chief Gregory, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move to the um, approval of the minutes. Anyone have any corrections? I move that we approve the uh, regular meeting and public uh, hearings of the city council minutes meetings. Uh, <laughs> minutes from the meeting of Wednesday, June 7th, 2023. Okay, any discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I um, wrote on the fire truck. I've had meetings uh, with Chad and uh, that's about all I've got to report up in there. Wrote on the fire truck? Yes, I wrote on the fire truck. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really something to sit up there on that hot box in the sun, going slow, listening to the siren. <laughs> did you wear? No, no, they didn't offer me any. No kidding? <laughs> yeah, no, I was very <laughs> I saw I got the wave like this, you know, like people close eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's on there, right? <laughs> no, no. All right, so we'll go on to uh, counselor reports. I'm going to start with uh, Preston. You got anything? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I didn't. I didn't do the dance, and I didn't do the parade. And, you know, I've done that so many years before. But I understand that it was a, you know, it was a really, really good turnout. It was. It was an excellent turnout. It was a wonderful dance. So, I saw it. Okay. Rita. Well, let me see. Okay, I met with the Plata Regional Housing Task Force, which um, we meet once a month, and it's represented from all the city and the county. And we are pursuing an IGA for all Plata uh, communities to uh, form together to pursue grant funding for possible housing production. And we're also exploring using publicly owned land for housing. I don't know how that's going to turn out. And then after that, uh, the Memorial Bench Committee, uh, I met with Susan, oh, Susan, sorry, Sharon, met with Sharon and we kind of talked about where we want to go with the committee. I met with Chad twice to pursue the parameters of what this committee can do. Uh, con uh, unfortunately, a lot of people think that the city owns the benches, the current benches, but they were put out by the Gearhart Homeowners Association. And we've tried to contact them if they have any inventory or location of the benches. And we really haven't heard back from them. So what we're doing now, uh, and I met with Chad and Kathy Zimmerman today, and uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an inventory of the current uh, locations, and which means walking around and trying to find them all. And then once we have the inventory, the current inventory in place, then after that, the city will pursue proposed locations and the city will own the benches from here to forward, just the ones that we're putting up, not the homeowners benches that I know of. Like, things might change, you never know. So there's 23 people on the list waiting for benches and we're going to have a meeting uh, on Saturday at Councilor Sharon's house to go further. Go ahead. Uh, I just have some thank yous. Um, the first one goes to Chad and the public works guys who fixed uh, what has been a huge divot eyesore on Ridge Road. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Um, second one goes to Chief Gregory and Ian for all your hard work yesterday. Thank you. 
And the third one goes to Dana for all of her efforts on the beach cleanup that was very successful today. That's it. That kind of leads into um, what I have to say because I have a lot of shout outs. Um, I, don't, I don't think that I deserve any credit for going along with the crowd on, on that one. Um, I want to start off with, I did, I did go to the, I did not ride on a fire truck, um, but uh, I did uh, go to the, the street dance and I want to throw a shout out to Melissa Eddie for that. That is, that was, I mean, come on, where do you get a little piece of that kind of Americana anywhere else? That is what is great about about your heart. And I think after this weekend or after this whole week, July 4th is definitely, for me, it's my favorite holiday now. It flows even Christmas out of the water. Um, so I wanna thank her. I wanna thank all of her volunteers. I wanna thank the firefighters. I wanna thank public works. I mean, it was really, it, it's been an exhausting, exhausting couple of days for everybody in the city. And I want to thank everybody there, but not only um, people in the city, but also um, I think we need to give a huge shout out to our citizens because we asked them to step up knowing we started talking a couple of months ago about how we had limited resources going into July 4th. Um, the police chief thing wasn't quite then um, finalized. And I was personally a little concerned, so I raised it. But the thing is that, you know, great minds think alike because at the same time, other people started reaching out and saying, hey, what are we going to do? Um, I was contacted by the Gearheart Association. I was contacted by uh, Tina Popke. Um, and, and a lot of people were having this conversation about we need to prepare for this and how are we going to prepare for this. And we came up with a great idea of personal responsibility. Let's stress personal responsibility. Let's use peer pressure. Um, we opted to do the signs. We had the discussion. City Council was unanimous and on board very quickly with the sign idea. Um, the mayor's wife, Susan Eady, designed those signs, and I have gotten so many compliments on them because they were really beautiful signs and well thought out signs. She did a great job with that. Um, and I want to remind everybody that if you have the signs, please don't throw them out. Keep them because they they don't say July, July 4th on them. They do have flags on them, but they could be used for any major holiday where we expect fireworks and where we want where we know we're going to have an influx of people and we want them to, to um, be courteous to everybody else. So please don't throw them out. Put them in your garage and pull them out again. I'm sure that we'll use them again. Um, the citizens that I want to really give shout out, shouts out to are uh, the citizens that helped plan the campaign and showed up. Um, Ann Taylor is one who called me right away and told me how she has organized beach cleanups in the past. Tina Popke, again, she put a lot of time and thought and effort into uh, what we should do. Candace Smith um, helped out tremendously. Kathy Zimmerman was all over social media with this, and she was the Pacific Way captain today, telling people, you know, organizing people that were going to have a beach cleanup. Um, I had Patty Hunter show up to the meeting that we had a couple of weeks ago, Megan and Tom um, Atkins, Bob Mori, uh, Sophie Gurn was another team, was there, has been there throughout this whole thing, and she was the team captain up at Del Rey. Um, again, Candace and, and Warwick, her husband, uh, Warwick Smith were there. Uh, Sharon, Sharon Clubber was our team captain down at Wellington, down at Little Beach, and was also at the meeting. Uh, Greg and Sharon Bush were also big supporters. And um, everybody else who came and asked for a sign, we ordered 100 signs, and I think we have maybe four left of the, of the yard signs. That's, that's tremendous. That's tremendous. What a big message that sent to everybody about how we expect people to, to behave in our city. And it's a lot harder to, um, to act in a way that's discourteous when there's so many people sending the same message that that's not what our town's about. And when you are in a town where you have limited resources and law enforcement, that they're, they're as busy as they can be, um, we all need to support them. And that was what this town showed up and did. So they, thank you very much. Um, and then also I met with uh, some citizens that were concerned by the articles about the water agreement and um, some of the some of the things that have been going on. So we had those discussions. A lot of people are grateful that we're, we're looking at this. They want to know why we didn't look into it before. And um, I'm glad that we're on a corrective path as far as that goes. Looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, on to city officer reports. 
Keith Gregory. First one. Uh, just want to say thanks again for this opportunity. I really look forward to serving the community. It's a great, great community to start that serve. Also, great, great week to start on, right? So, very, very, very good. For, uh, uh, the street dance was awesome. It was a, uh, what an opportunity to meet people and shake hands and then kind of get everyone familiar and you know meet meet all the citizens. So that was good, a good opportunity. Um, the Fourth of July last night was busy but ran very smoothly. Uh, we had you know, some some calls for service. There were some firework complaints. Um, but everything went fine. Some ambitious uh, juveniles as well, but everything worked out and, and we, were, we managed to have a state night. So uh, it's been really good working with Ian. Known Ian for a long time and helped get to know Ian even better. And so uh, I think we're going to work very well together. Great. I have a question for you. Are we still going to contract at all with the sheriffs? So that is the plan, as long as everyone's on board with uh, Sheriff Phillips, uh, I've submitted him a proposal. Um, I obviously showed him that we're uh, minimizing our hours of service. He's more than happy to work with us. I think it's there, there's a contract that's being written up right now uh, to continue to service until we can get fully staffed and maybe even into the future. Thanks. And that'll be offset by the, the savings that we have from not actually paying for the officer. Yes, ma'am. Officer. All right. Well, thank you. Anyone else got any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I don't even have to call, huh? I was ready for you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I'll start off with a quick uh, typical data report from last month. June of 23, we had 62 calls for service. Uh, that splits up to 30 calls for the city and 20 inside our fire district outside of city limits. We sent out auto aid 12 times. Six of those was to seaside, their infrastructure fires, extra times they had extra manpower coverage, uh, and the other major call that they needed help for was a big gas leak that they shut down the highway in front of the seaside. With that story twice for structure fires, Cannon Beach for structure fire once, Lewis and Clark once for brush wildland fire, Warrington for structure fire, and Clatskin once. We sent a couple of us and Lewis and Clark went to Clatskin I for uh, escape brush wildland fire out there. So in total, we had, I think we had seven structure fires last month, just, just for last month. Um, busy month. We received eight three times. Uh, they were all from the urban department of forestry. Uh, whenever any department in county has a brush or wildland fire, urban department of forestry comes and assists them, assists that agency with that. Uh, they uh, backfill, they supply, provide support, and then when we move into mop up, we can transfer the fire then we are volunteers back to do what the volunteers like to do every time. How that compares to the previous year, uh, June of 2022, we had 53 calls, so we we're almost 10 calls ahead this year. Uh, the end of June of 2022, we ended on call 321. We ended June this year on call 309 because of last night and yesterday. But we are now only four calls away to date, I mean, last year's uh, events. Um, I'll talk quick. Um, speaking of last year, I mean, yesterday, seems like a year ago, Mom. Uh, the morning was super busy with the parades, full of that and the hot dogs. We give out 1,000 hot dogs away. Fire, of course. In the morning in the dump tank. Uh, once we cleaned up from that, uh, from morning events, we transitioned in the coverage of our district, our full fire district, city and district. Uh, we had staff on uh, our formal diet apparatus. We had them on tactical patrol, which is a fancy way of saying preventing hazards and keeping people out of the dunes, and making sure we have a good presence and mitigating issues before they become a big problem. Uh, yesterday's call breakdown was three medical calls. 10 public assist, that was information either taken or given by citizens or, or the law enforcement officers. 15 unattended fires, we assisted uh, another agency once. We had one brush fire, uh, one structure fire. I see it from 20 seconds. Uh, one uh, fire alarm with that. Yesterday in total, we had 33 calls, which was 10 more than last year. Uh, 14 volunteer firefighters put in an 18 hour day yesterday. And now off to another brush fire. Uh, How many hours have you worked in the last couple of days? A lot. 
I think around, you not worked. <laughs> I guess 36 over the last yeah. two. Yeah, and then now was, was before that, and that weekend now's alone was a 23 hour weekend. That weekend. How about you, Chief? 32 hours in the last two days. I should have added the last two days. <laughs> ah. Sorry about moving them quick. I got to go rush back. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chief. Hey. So June uh, has busy has been a busy financial month, and I just want to remind everyone that the finance reports um, are not finalized until our auditors complete the official audit. So we do make adjustments, and we have some interest payments and other things. They are the most accurate to our ability at the time, but they could change. Uh, they are scheduled, our auditors are come to scheduled to come in August, so they'll come and meet with us and go over all of our records as an independent third party. The report is not due until to the state until December, so they'll come in August, but they'll have until December to finish the audit. There was a wholehearted effort to pay all invoices for the expenditures in the 2022 and 23 fiscal year. Um, <clears throat> staff should always strive to purchase, receive, and pay for all their expenditures in the correct fiscal year. This helps us actually get a gauge of what's happening each month, what, what they need and what they don't need, um, versus um, trying to push expenditures forward into the new year. So I appreciate everybody's help in getting those invoices open, always easy. Uh, please note that there were transactions after the revenue and expenditure reports were submitted in the council packet. So we printed the packet as late as we could on Friday. So I think I printed it at one, but I think I printed uh, many checks after that. So just be aware of that. The city receives their annual Gearhart Rural Fire District payment, which was for the $230,215 for providing fire protection services to the outside of your heart city limits areas. The annual amount is defined by an agreement that is currently in negotiation. So we'll be looking at what that process looks like um, and working with them to get a new uh, contract agreement in place. The general fund ending balance is very strong. Um, it's projected to be around 851,000, which includes restricted funds uh, so of that 851, there are funds that we still have for the American Rescue Act, for the bench beautification project. There's a little bit of money still from the Duncan's Crossing and for a pickleball. So that, those money and the ending fund balance are reserved for those specific projects. All budgeted transfers were made from the budget, uh, general fund. So there were some uh, transfers to the police car reserve, the fire apparatus reserve, the hazardous mitigation and the building reserve. So in the revenues and expenditures report, the transfers are considered a revenue to each one of the funds and their expenditure in the non-departmental section in the general fund. So you can see the revenue and the expenditures in that report. In expenditures, there was a payment for city attorney fees, the finalized payment for, to GMP for the police chief recruitment, another payment to the Clatsa Sheriff's Office for continued law enforcement support, capital outlay equipment purchases in the fire department, the standard quarterly volunteer gas and clothing reimbursement check to the Gearhart Volunteer Fire Department, Municipal judge services, so he submitted um, his invoice for the fiscal year, and an invoice for the new gravel walkway in Centennial Gardens. So those were the major June um, expenditures. We have started working on our job description, salary schedule, employee handbook, and evaluation project. Uh, we're working with Bullard Law, which is a specialized uh, law firm, and they work in labor relations and human resources. They do a lot of collective bargaining, and so they're um, going to help us kind of get that process tightened up a little bit. Uh, tonight, we will receive information on the city's water rate study um, from Steve Donovan, and uh, he, he did update his presentation after I had sent him some more information. It, it really isn't a significant uh, change um, in the ending fund balance. It, it still is a, a low, lower than we would like amount. So 
we did post that on the web and I sent an email out to you all today. So if you have any questions, let me know. Yes, Thank you, Mayor and Council. Take it right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Peter. It's, it's always good news when you're done here for me, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm about to have my third case of Luba right now, and none of them involve you. So <laughs> that's very good news. And um, I received just absolutely wonderful feedback from our new police chief already uh, as far as the job that people uh, are seeing him doing. Um, as well as his department, their ability to pull in officers from other departments. Um, and he's only been on the job for a couple of days and he's already creating a lot of people. So I think that's wonderful. And we'll probably need to send some letters to some private schools in the Portland area before next 4th of July. And so they understand that um, their consequences to actions. Uh, so we'll, we'll put that on the calendar. Um, I've worked with uh, Steve Donovan in multiple jurisdictions for, for a, a long time and really happy that he's, he's working on this project. Um, we have made really good progress with Warrington as far as um, kind of the, where the proposed contract is now. And it is going to, it seems like it is going to be a limited duration contract. So um, Chad and I are talking about really making sure that we have the the data that we'll need in order to seek additional water rates for the city. That really seems like it's it's not just advisable, but very <laughs> necessary. Um, but the good news is I think that the latest proposed agreement from Warrington um, demonstrates that, that they understand what we can provide to them. And so I think we're pretty close to being good with that. And um, about all I have. Thank you, Peter. I'm sorry for no, just all right. Now, Chad, city administrator. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, mine I'll keep short. We are going to, as a team, get together and do an after action meeting in regards to the street dance in the 4th of July. So, if the councilors or anybody in the public have some ideas of things that they'd like to bring up, things that went well, or maybe something that needs to be improved, I would be more than happy to receive those in my email, which is easily found online. Uh, counselors as well. We'll be doing that after action meeting next week sometime. We haven't scheduled it quite yet, but it will be probably in the first half of the meeting before we uh, forget about some of the things that uh, occurred. Things went very smoothly. The, the administrative staff was very good at the communication side of things, um, and they were bit, very busy doing that. Uh, the team itself uh, is a little tired, as we talked about. Uh, we had a lot of people working a lot of hours, and so I just wanted to make sure that uh, the city you know, understands that there are volunteers and the people that are working here dearly love the city, and I think they did a great job. Uh, the Contract, uh, as Peter was talking about, is looking uh, much better, and I'll be bringing that to the council as soon as the uh, city of Warrenton uh, approves their end. And uh, then that will work along with what Mr. Donovan is going to talk about. Uh, the terms are a little bit better uh, than what we anticipated um, for this one year contract. So I think that our budget is going to be in good shape moving forward um, if we make some of the changes that we're going to talk about. See, uh, other than that, uh, any questions that anybody has about uh, my report or anything else they need to know? I'll keep it short. My team did a good job on uh, covering any of the things I want. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Justine. Your financial work on this is one of the highest amounts that we've had for uh, carry forward uh, from one year to the next, even with subtracting. Um, the, uh, the, the care monies that we have and some of those other accounts. So your part on the general side is, is looking really good. That's all that I have. Uh, great, thanks a lot for that. All right, now we're moving on to visitors and Steve Donovan from Donovan Enterprises Inc. is here to give a presentation on our water rate study. Okay. Here, What's the easiest way to do the key? You guys can just see if you could 
run the keys there. I, I can just speak to it that way without the. Sure. Yes. Yes. If you wouldn't mind giving just a moment here, a uh, little we'll technical support for technical support here. Ms. Christie, if you can hear us, I'm going to be uh, Ms. Justine's computer turn so we can share. Okay, give it a try. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. It's not coming up, Ms. Christie. I was able to share. He's got the permissions. There you go. There you go. It just takes a minute. There you go. Chad, if you could run it on the uh, uh, run presentation. Yeah. And uh, I've got some animation in it, so you'll be having to hit the key. The uh, the down keys every time to refresh your screen. Down key. You'll see it. You'll see. It. I'll walk you through it. There we are. And by the end of this presentation, I'm not going to be a very popular guy. <laughs> My name is Steve Donovan. I'm uh, your rate consultant. I have worked for the city since 2010. Believe it or not, uh, I was on the engineering team uh, when you designed the well field uh, back in 2010. And then he issued the, the bonds, the general obligation bonds for payment of the well field. We did the financial analysis on that. Tonight, I want to thank Justine. She's just been doing major heavy lifting to get stuff to me because uh, I started looking at this. And go ahead, Chad. Why don't we just loop through? In your packets is a, a, a paper copy of what you're going to see tonight. And I think we're going to do 10 minutes of presentation. If anything, Confuses you or have questions, stop me immediately. No need to go through this thing coast to coast. I want to talk about trends in the water fund. Fund third, you have two funds respectfully to water. You've got the water fund and the water reserve fund. Think about the water fund as your paycheck. Think about the water reserve fund as your 401k. Think about that as an analogy. Uh, we're going to talk about the current financial status of the water fund, and then we're going to give you a quick snapshot, which you folks are all interested in. What's everybody else in the neighborhood paying for water? Doesn't have a hill of beans to do with what it costs you to deliver water to your customers, but everybody else wants to know that. And then I've taken the liberty of putting a fence around what we've got here and make some recommendations to you. I'm not asking for any action on your part tonight. I wanted to get out of here ASAP to talk to you about this. I want you to consider it. Uh, then there will be action taken in the future, but we do want to see signs from the dugout tonight. After this presentation, I'm going to actually pull you folks to see where you want to go because action needs to be taken. Go ahead, Chad. So here's the fiscal results for Fund 30 from the five year trend. And as you can see, Labor. Utilities are fundamentally a labor driven business. Much like anything in government here, labor is your biggest cost component. Cops are expensive, firefighters are expensive, public works folks are expensive. Your costs over the last five years have been growing at an average of 7.47% per year. In other words, you're adding about $20,000 per year in labor costs every year since 17 to 22. That's just the history. That's your experience. Go ahead, Chad. Materials and services. That's, as the as title implies, that's the nuts and the bolts and the pencils and the paper clips. And in your case, it really is nuts and bolts and pipes. And, and your biggest cost is purchased water. Ta-da. Warrant. Materials and services have been going at 5.8%. You add about $28,000 per year, historically. Um, and your purchased water costs have been growing faster than your average in materials and services at about 6.6% per year. Go ahead. You spend about $40,000 per year on just general 
fixing up the system, leaks and breaks and uh, hydrants and meter repair. The, the ongoing work of uh, capitalizing an ongoing utility. You haven't had a rate increase since 2013. That's your problem. Go ahead. So here's the historical trend. You just get the arrow down. See that blue line? That line has been steadily declining. That is the ending fund balance. That is the lifeblood of fund 30. Think about your checking account. You're dropping your paycheck into your checking account. That's the trend line that you're seeing. And as of June 30th, we think you're going to have about $12,000 in the water fund. By my estimate, without a transfer back of cash from the reserve fund back into the, the operating fund, fund 30, you will go broke probably by the middle of this month. You were smart folks in your budget process this year. You made an appropriation to transfer cash from the reserve fund, 314,000, I think it was, we'll talk about that in a second, to recapitalize, as it were, the operating fund. You were borrowing from your 401k to pay your, your cable TV bill. Go ahead, Chad. Now, oh, can we go back to that? Yeah, there we go. A little touchy here. There we go. That green line, what, what on earth is that green line all about? That is from 2017 to 2022, the minimum amount of cash by industry standards of what you should have had in Fund 30. So in all years in the last five years, you've been below 90 days of operating expenses as a reserve. That's an industry standard. And the reason we use 90 days of operating expenses is because there's seasonality to the water business. You take in about 50% of your annual revenues in the months of June through September. So you take in 50% of your revenue in four months. That's the seasonality. Warmer weather, people use more water. In the winter, they don't. That's what that is. So this, you have not been in any historical trend here, have the reserve requirement that we want you to have. Go ahead, Chad. We're estimating the water fund is going to finish this year with 12 grand, as I talked about, uh, and you're going to have the cash infusion. Go ahead, the next bullet. Uh, this is where I say you folks are smart cookies. Uh, in your budget process, probably what last April <coughs> is when you did your budget, Justine probably threw a hissy fit, said, You guys, you're going broke. We, we can't do this. So you authorize a transfer from your 401k back into your checking account to recapitalize the fund. You need to make that transfer now. So you should get that cash back in there or your auditors are gonna really, really be surprised. So that's just one thing you should do and you don't need to just the authority to do it, so she's going to do it. Uh, we're estimating that the reserve fund is gonna finish this year with 1.3 million. We're gonna transfer that $341,000 back into the operating fund so now you're going to have $950,000 in your 401k. Now I'm being a little flip with that 401k analogy, but that is your capital reserve fund. That is the fund that you're using to make sure that you've got money to do capital projects. You have a water master plan. You now have a contract, a short-term contract uh, for purchased water. That's not your future. That should not be your future. You need to have a secure water system here. We need to see Peter and, and Chad are going to have to find ways to get you senior water rights in your area. They cost money. They cost a lot of money to develop, not only to purchase, but to also develop. My guess is, I don't know the, the specifics, but if I've done this for long enough now, you're going to have to purchase an existing water right from someone somewhere and then develop that right. That's going to cost you probably between a half a million dollars and a million dollars. Fair guess, Peter? Um, we have a lot of data from our current wells and our preliminary analysis is that, um, and the historical records are a bit murky as to why we ended up with the amount that we got. But during heavy rains, our dunes actually bleed water, which is incredibly uh, rare, apparently, according to, according to 
Peter Moore, who's our water council um, in his team. So we think that with the data we have, we may be able to justify um, additional pumping. That would be nice to have the cooperation of our neighbor to the north, and, and that's something we're asking for in the IGA for the interim services. So I, in this, normally I would be like, you're correct, we need to develop that. And we have some unique circumstances, so we might not need to, but of course we have to prepare for the worst, and that would be purchasing the water and developing it. But right now, based, and we have, we have approval for some additional wells in our, our field as well. So, um, but working with the state, not always the easiest. <laughs> um, so we're, we're, uh, and we're not in the doomsday scenario, but um, I think people need to really conserve water where they can. And then of course, having rates that reflect what we're spending is very important as well. You're going to have money to capitalize your system. This is, you got to remember, this is a pipe system with pressurized water going through it. What could go wrong, right? <laughs> it's going to take money to care for care and feeding. And you also live in a seismically active area with really unique soils. It's going to be expensive to operate and maintain the system. And by the way, you just don't deliver water to drink. What's the other thing you do with your water? Fire. Fire protection. Just talked about the fires they had. You are responsible for providing your water system at all times to have 20 pounds of hydrostatic pressure to provide fire protection. So you are the key reason that uh, uh, property owners have reasonable property insurance rates because you have a municipal water system that provides fire protection. So that's the second service you provide uh, within the water within the water envelope. Uh, to be sustainable, the water utility needs phase rate increases. Now, in my perfect world, where I could just walk in here, wave my hands, and then leave, I'd say you need a 20% rate increase now, tonight, because we're in the summer period. Where that's when you're going to capture your revenue, because we're not only in a situation where you need a unit rate increase, we got to get that rate increase in when we're selling water, duh, you know? But that's untenable, and I, you, we don't have to put you there. Go ahead, Chad. So here's a quick shot of, of water rates. Because you haven't had any rate increases since 2013, you have some of the cheapest water rates in the region, and that doesn't surprise me, and that's, that's great. But you're driving the bus into the ditch. Go ahead. So here's the recommendations. I apologize to the folks in the crowd here. I hope the fo folks on, on the internet can see this. With the rates, uh, I want, since we're gonna have $300,000, up to $340,000, I hope it's not that much, brought back into the operating system, you bought yourself a little time. What I'd like to see is for you to think about this, get your public involvement out there, talk to your constituents, let them know what's going on. We're not going to shove this down anybody's throat. But we raise rates by 10% January 1st, the midpoint of this year. We're not going to sell a lot of water at January 1st, but that also helps soften the blow to folks who are uh, your customers. <laughs> and I'd like to see an, an additional 10% rate increase the following January. And then every January thereafter, 4%, just to keep up with inflation. Second, uh, the other thing, because you folks, I mean, Justine did a great job in your budget, in order to stop the bleeding on the operating side, she has stopped making transfers to the Public Works Equipment Reserve Fund. Not funding depreciation on your equipment and your trucks, you don't have any money to replace because that's what that money is for. So we're not only, Funding capitalization of the system, we're not we're not funding the operational costs of trucks and equipment and all of the heavy equipment it takes to run a water system. So what we're talking about doing there is uh, starting that transfer with your next fiscal year, get it up to twenty thousand dollars. We've modeled it, and you can afford that with the rate increase profiles that we've talked about. Uh, the next one is assume cost increases in the water fund. I want to put you guys on a uh, a diet. 
for this, this fiscal year that we started Jan July 1st. And what I'd like to see, if you can, is hold your labor costs to 5% increases, your materials and services up to 5%, and then over the forecast, we're going to try to get it back down into that 3% range. Dana? Okay. Um, so this is where I, I made a note to myself that that seems a little optimistic. I mean, there's only so much we can do operationally. And as she was talking about, we, we are in the process of working with a human resource attorney about salaries. We've had problems, you know, we've had to um, figure out curves and, and do things there. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm concerned that you're modeling this based on a very optimistic you betcha. number. And if we don't make that, then guess what? We've got to raise rates more. There's, it's a, not a zero sum, right? It is a zero sum game. If I can't get it from this pocket, I got to get it from this pocket. I'm just, I'm just wondering why why the rate why the labor rates have gone up 7.5 percent for the last however many years five years it's the last five years some of that has been reallocation of forces you know we have been operating a little bit differently and trying to do apples for apples in the past the general fund actually paid for some of the labor that was going into the water fund and we stopped doing that we wanted to know exactly what we were spending so that's part of it uh, and, and Justine is in charge of the allocation, and she's been helping us out now. now. Um, there's also been a PERS, uh, quite a large PERS increase that happened uh, to the city of Gerhardt. It's not because of the staff or what have you. Well, it is having to do with transition to the staff from tier one to tier three. So those costs have gone up as well. But we haven't done 7% um, increases across the board to the uh, employees. It's all of those things together. Yeah, but though, I mean, the PERS is part of the, of the wage package. It is, but the amount that the city pays uh, towards the difference between what PERS has and what we owe our employees increases or decreases depending on how the market can, um, uh, uh, performs. And uh, there's always been a deficit of what was in PERS in Oregon compared to what they owe all of their employees. So the city of Gearheart pays an additional amount uh, as all most cities, I can't say all, but like 90% of the cities pay an additional amount to get caught up to make up for that difference. And there was promises made. Tier one was a uh, tier one was a very uh, lucrative for some of those employees. We're rolling out of the tier one employees and going to tier two and OPRD. And uh, I don't know if that's going to help much, but. Uh, those are the where those costs. Another piece of pie, Preston, is uh, health insurance. Employer contributions to health insurance. That's all part of the wage package. Right. And that's why it's been going up. Workers' comp. Yeah. Uh, no. Unemployment. All of those things. And I don't, I don't want to take us off into the weeds, but the expertise of our employees has increased. And when that increases, you have to pay them more. And we're competing with other cities. And we really are not paying a ridiculous amount of money to any of our staff. Um, in fact, I would... I don't want to throw anybody under the bus or, or start talking about private personal things here but a number of our employees have taken a pay cut to come join us so we need to keep that in mind that um it, it none of us expect to still be paid at the same amount we were seven years ago everybody expects to be compensated if you if you're doing a good job you in order to keep employees you have to continue to um make sure that what they're making is uh, proportionate to what they have to expend and in this in this economy it's it is what it is we're, we're going to lose employees if we're not paying attention to that and you're not running a, a fat operation here your your public works groups yeah. i was i was looking at the, at the compliment you're you run a very very lean what 2.5 fte to the water fund i mean we're not talking about a massive amount of people here and you're running a water system so that being said, those numbers are what they are. And you haven't had any revenue increases to compensate. So guess what? Your reserves have been drawn down. This is not, this is not a surprise. No, I understand that. Yeah. Go ahead. Why wouldn't in January of 24, why wouldn't we just go for the 20%? Sticker shock. We're, you guys, we're talking about $2.30 per month per whatever this six cc up of water chair sure, this is why you get the big bucks to sit in that chair 
I think this Sharon, is... city staff would agree with you. Oh, I will too. That. And we, we will uh, <laughs> talk to the mayor about this uh, earlier, and we're going to do a board session. And staff is probably going to make recommendations that uh, maybe even a little bit above and beyond this, because in the past we were putting a hundred thousand dollars away, right? Right. And, uh, the reserve fund we were doing really well, but as the cost and everything increased, we did try to keep the rates low while we were paying off the bonds. We were so close. I uh, think we have maybe two years left on the bonds total. Mm -hmm. Yet uh, trying to keep that efficient and working, it's right. just right. and thankfully Mr. Donovan's pointing out that we're going to have to move a little bit sooner. Than we and, like. and I think you're right in that we need to have some public input if we're going to do them. They're going to ask them to pay for our money. We have to involve them in the discussion. At least. And we could craft a modest means program for people on a fixed income so that if people truly are Peter. stretched. <laughs> I've said that every time I say this in a jurisdiction, that's the <laughs> Shut up, Peter. <laughs> Problem with, and, I, and you all know this, but if, if we have lifeline rates or subsidies for fixed income or low income people, I gotta raise your rate. I gotta raise your rate. I gotta raise your rate because it's a zero sum game. The costs don't go away because we're giving a discount to someone else. Hey, let's just take a look at the city. You know, this city used to be the 13th lowest taxing district in the state of Oregon, it was the third highest in income in the, in the state of Oregon. I don't think there's many people on. I mean, if you if these people are on fixed income, uh, they're making a lot of money on their fixed income. Let, let's finish the numbers here, and then I'm going to come back to you. And you guys are you're hitting on all eight cylinders exactly. What you're you're you're, you're my straight man. I mean, this is a business. <laughs> we are running this as we have to run this as a business, and that means we have to have revenues that come in and exceed or match our costs. And Absolutely. we haven't done that. And we haven't done it since. Well, at least since 2017. Uh, go ahead, Jeff. Knock it down here. Now, here we're going to do this. Here's that that squiggly line, the, the, the blue line of death, for lack of a better term, driving it down. Go ahead and hit it again. What's going to happen here is come July 1st, like two days ago, a big infusion of $341,000 is going to pump that in ending fund balance back up. But then you're going to see it's going to go down because I'm talking about a 10% rate increase January 1st and then another 10%. And then we slowly over time, bring that red line up to go ahead and hit the bar once more so that we get our reserve up to that 90 days of operating reserve. That was my strategy for the 10%, 10% and 4% thereafter. I don't like it. I, I really don't like the fact that we're taking money out of our 401k to pay our electric bill. but. Uh, we can survive this if we're prudent. You've got good managers. You know what's going on here. You know, this is not a surprise. I've got a proposal to you that I think could work. It, it does take into some putting you on a, on a diet the, on the operating side. And if inflation doesn't get beaten here soon, and we don't make that, that 10% is probably going to be 15% and 15% and 6%, 6% thereafter. <coughs> that's the that's the fulcrum that we're talking about here. But I'd like to for now, I think we're done here. I want to open this back up. Am I crazy? Should I just take my leave and, and get written, written out of town here? No, you're the canary in the coal mine. So, yeah, you need, we need to hear this. And we, you are correct. We were already having this discussion and during our budget meeting. We said we were not going to continue to to transfer money around and rob Peter to pay Paul and, and pretend like, you know, like we don't have an issue. Um, so we need to get the public involved. We need to listen to you, um, obviously. Um, I think that your numbers are a little optimistic. I think we might be able to get a buy-in for a little higher percentage starting January 1st, but I don't know for a fact. But then also there, we, we have a city that has a very weird, um, I, I mean, we have some people in, in the city that are very, very wealthy. And then we have some people in the city that are living from paycheck to paycheck, are not even, you know, social security check to social security check, are not even sure that they're gonna be able to live the rest of their lives. In the homes that they've lived in their entire life. So we've got a, 
at, as far as if we could find a way to be sensitive <laughs> to be sensitive to that and, and maybe look at if you are if you have an ornamental garden bless you congratulations but I don't think that some of the people that are barely making it should have to pay for your ornamental garden so mayor I haven't heard boo from you come on let's hear the sage sage advice sage advice oh man I've been on this water thing for a while, but um, he's the leading the charge. I I want immediate, but if I've got to have public input on it, then uh, we're going to miss our window of selling water in the summertime. In a perfect world, we would have been sitting here in February of 2023. Today, we would have it remaining sideways, and I can get in front of you saying, "Come July 1st, we're going to do this," because that's your start of your fiscal year. We missed the window, but. I think it's in my judgment, and Peter, chime in here. It's always better to have public involvement and take cooler heads and take your time going through this stuff. Yes. And jamming it up and saying, yeah, we need it, and we all know we need it, but let's let's do it tonight at 20%. I, I think you, you, you get some major pushback. So let's, we modeled it out financially. You can make it happen, barring any catastrophe and if you had a catastrophe you would go to the state water resources board and go to the safe drinking act and you borrow some money if you had a catastrophe and a couple of years ago down the coast uh, i mean there were come there was some landslides people lost water lines they had emergencies but they had reserves you don't have a lot of reserve and you've been eating into your reserves and we're going to continue to eat into our reserves so that's why you see this line. There's a, if I, in a perfect world, I would jump that red line right up to the green line right now, and that's and and that would do it. And we so we keep rates up that high. Let's go toward that goal of moving it up, moving up there slowly, and manage what we've got, and be better better stewards of what we're doing. Uh, I think more than ten percent is going to be palatable, people. I think that to um, to the points that were made by council from, from some of the councilors, right. there are a very small number of people that would. Um, or would want to participate in a, a modest means program. It's going to be less than 20. Um, but I think that the other thing is people are very concerned about those people and the impact that no one wants to see people priced out of the community. So I think that offering that sort of program, um, frankly, is going to have minimal cost and is going to make people feel better. And what I would also expect, as I've seen this happen in other communities, is that others will donate money into that. Um, to help their neighbors out and honestly donate, I add money to their water bill for that purpose. And I've seen some significantly higher than I would expect in percentages of people who have done that, like up to 20% of repairs in the city that pay extra amount. So I think that's all possible. We're so much lower than any of the surrounding communities. Um, I mean, for last year, 13 bucks less than Canada Beach. And um, the price, the price of what we buy from Warrington is about to go up. So That's the other thing, yeah, uh, the, the, the purchase water costs are going to go up, and I'm still hoping you guys can stay on a diet of five percent increases. So you got to cut some of those other line items if you can. Conversely, if you can't, that ten percent is a faulty number, and it's going to go. It's got to go north. I, I I would submit that it is a faulty number because we have a, a growing community. Uh, We've only we only have 13 employees, and but we have people that are moving here, and especially since COVID, that are moving from cities where they had a, a significant number of services that they have learned to expect, and they're starting to look to us to provide those services. And we still only have 13 employees, so we are already being creative. We're already running very lean. So I I I you, that gives me highs when you. <laughs> You're, uh, I'm just I'm here with Nelly and I want to be I'm really good at spending other people's money <laughs> hey Dan I don't want to spend other people's money the people that are moving here okay all we have to do is tell them that they're not going to get the services that they are in Portland or San Francisco or LA or wherever that they came from well, okay to some extent. we've got two police officers possibly three instead of 35 or 40 okay and they just have to expect that Right? Um, are you going to tell? I'll, I'll tell them. That's you damn right, I'll tell them. I want to, okay. Okay, Steve, so when you guys. Hold it up, hold it up. 
when you when you guys killed myself here. So when you guys set this whole well system up and everything like that, yeah, right? yeah, right. Warren Warren challenged us. Jam and you know, okay. Warren was killing. Okay, so as far as history goes, they were worried about Neocoxy Creek. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. which is a spawning. It used to be. It's not anymore, but it used to be a spawning creek. Okay, for the salmon and steelhead. What 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 are the results been? Because in the summertime, when everybody's down here and demanding water, we're only able to take out so much from our well field. Right. Okay. Right. So what's happened with the with the with the report or the or the you know what's going on with with uh, Neocoxy Creek and the, and the fact that we can't pump more water. Well, out. that's the Sony four thousand dollar question, right? Why are we having to buy water when we have a perfectly good well field? Is that the, that kind of what you're asking here? It's pretty much. Pretty much. And the answer is? The state did a compromise. So as far as we can, I was obviously I was the city attorney and Chad was the city administrator, but in talking to people, Warrington spent a tremendous amount of money building out their system, which is why their water rates are double what ours are. Um, they were going to lose their most profitable customer and that we're the first in line. It goes through our pipes before it hits theirs. And it seems like there was a compromise that was made. And um, we have had people that I think were part-time residents or have vacation homes that are down here full-time and they're using a bunch more water. So even though we're metering houses and even though we're encouraging people to use less, the number of homes and the number of users is increasing. And, you know, the good news is that we now have a record based on this round of negotiations with Borden that demonstrates they want us to develop a water source. So the public pressure that was applied last time of don't give them more water, that's the opposite of what of the record that we have now, which is in writing, we expect you to develop your own water source because they're worried. I, you know, justifiably, I can't imagine that they would just be worried over nothing. But we now have every reason to go back to the state and say our wells can produce the consultants that Chad and I have talked to say double what we're doing now. So we could actually go from being a net buyer to a net seller of water. That our water is so pure that when people taste the chemicals, it's because we're not commingling the water with anyone. It's we're using the minimum amount of chlorine and everything else that we can, and uh, but we've got pure water. They describe our um, field as basically a bathtub. So it appears that the water all comes in through the sand, and that basically fills up this basin, and we're not able to pump it fast enough that it doesn't disgorge on its own. Is what again, Peter Moore, who I worked with for probably close to 20 years, who only does water law. That's his preliminary analysis. So I think that the good news is, um, and this everyone could be wrong, like we won't know until we've screwed up, but it seems like a very prudent bet to be making. Um, and you know, that three hundred thousand dollars a year we're no longer paying. That makes us significantly better. Having a rate that is, and again, we've been, we haven't had the data that we needed to bring in Steve and arm him in order to do his analysis until we did, which is now. Because we want accurate numbers that people can understand. But I, I just think to this point, what other people pay on in some respect doesn't matter. But the reality is we are so far under any city by staff and all of your neighbors. And I, I do not think that an extra five bucks a month is going to be sicker shock to most. And I think, and Steve may disagree with this because he has in other jurisdictions, a steeply tiered system so that the more water you use above like a baseline of 4,000 gallons or something like that, the higher rate you pay. Um, I think people are going to understand that as well. Um, and that also will help us in conservation. So I, I think that, uh, we obviously need to do the fund balance. We're going to need to raise them. Um, the public outreach is going to be so critically important so that people have accurate data. 
And you know, that's on all of you, um, as well as your staff. Oh, and you're gonna get pushback, regardless of anything. That's the reason why we went to the well system when Morton realized that they didn't have the money to put in their filtration system. So they started jacking the rates up. Oh yeah. I okay, mean, and then everybody up on the front there screaming and complained because they weren't paying three dollars a month. I, I don't think that we will get as much pushback as you would think because we haven't raised our rates in so long. And I think that if we communicate with the folks in this town, we have smart folks here who are going to get it, but we need to, we do need to have that public input. One of the questions that I would like to have for them to be able to answer for them when we go before them is when we do what you're recommending, where is that going to, where were we going to fall on this to the best of your ability? I know that they are also planning rate increases, but where would we compare with them at the I was going to put that in that chart, in that analogy. Which chart is that? The bar chart. Okay. That one there. So the other, the other thing is, you know, we're at the bottom here. All the other cities that we're being compared against also have sewer that's included in their water rates. That's just water. 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 That chart that you got is just water. And you're right. We shouldn't be looking at this in a vacuum. You pay water. You pay sewer. You pay cable TV. You pay electric. You pay natural gas. Before you know it, you're paying 250 bucks a month for utilities. Mm -hmm. Now that's a real chunk of money. Mm -hmm. And we should not take that in a vacuum. Plus, you just come out that they're paying for groceries. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this. this Six CCF. What is CCF? That's 100 cubic feet of water. Okay, so when you a typical two-person household will use. Justine, she she got she. she <laughs> we were we're expecting this. The average person in your city, average customer with a five-eighths inch meter, uses 6.2 CCF units. Now your rate structure, you're allowed. Five units in your base charge every month. So if you go over five units, you only pay for that one unit or whatever units you, you use. And you have some customers. I look back at the 2010 because I hit it by a month from when we were doing the well field analysis. The average uses six units. You've got some folks in this town that use 50. Yeah. So you got some some pretty well off large lots that have heavily landscaped <coughs> areas. So you think about this, you, know, a, you think it'd be a bell curve and all, everybody's in the middle, it's not, it's shaped like this. Everybody's at six and then it tails off to the, to the far right. So 6.2 units is the average. And it can also change how by year to year because I, I noticed oh, one, of, one of your charts up there, it showed us looking really good well, not really good, but better at, at this time. You have not looked good year. ever. No, no, okay. not, not good. <laughs> better. Um, you look great. You look great. great. You look great. So we. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, but we look. We have looked better in some years at the end of the year when we haven't had such a dry month. And May was a very dry month for us compared to last year. And so everybody who just started their gardening and they put their starts out there and everything else and really watered the heck out of their lives. And again, we're growing. We have more houses put in landscape. The dark side of recycling and conservation, the better you folks are at recycling and conservation, is the faster I'm going to raise your rates. Because our rates are predicated on volume. I want you to use all the water you can. When you go home, turn on your toilets, turn on your taxes, <laughs> turn everything up. It's not the best of this thing. No. no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so this one we're going to safely carry. You think it started the hooks coming out okay. and you're going to throw us? I said this before. Your heart sits on a sand dip. If you irrigate, it just goes back in. It just goes, <laughs> yeah, but it's got to go 250 feet or 175 okay. feet or whatever. Nice clean water. <laughs> okay. It's, I mean, that's, this is a huge, sand filtration system that we're sitting on. Okay, that's the reason our water is so good damn pure. So if you, if the more you irrigate, the less it's gonna, the less good it's gonna do you. You know, you need to conserve and, and drip irrigate or whatever it is, if you're gonna, if you're gonna raise a garden or flowers or whatever. Already, I've taken away too much of your time. I have a question for Chad. Right. I might be wrong about this. I usually am, but do I remember before any of us were on the city council about 10 
15 years ago, they lowered the water rates. That, why did they do that? I can't remember. Because they, I remember sitting in the audience mm -hmm. and they were talking about, we have so much money, we're just gonna give you guys money back. And I'm sitting in the audience going, yeah. Yeah, there was a period of time where we were adjusting the rates. It was very important to the community to show that we could produce the water at a good rate right. to make up for what Warrington was doing to us and still put the, the reserve amounts aside. And that's entirely possible. Because my rates went down and I thought, great. The, yeah, I can't remember which year it was, but I do remember. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Well, I mean, back then I was, was on the city council. I was just kind of looking at water rates. But thank you. I didn't think I was missing something yeah i'm gonna have to verify how that went and it wasn't very much and it's so it, yeah this, i mean we're talking about with one ten percent increase it's four dollars yeah every two months right and then if we do another ten percent so we're looking at close to ten dollars for two months of increase so the other aspect we, we want to look at this is when we got the high-end users and we're looking at conservation mm -hmm. we may take that amount that for the overage amount once you get past the 10 units of water every two months if that amount that you spend above and beyond that gets a little bit more expensive that's water conservation yeah, as well it's called and inverted blocks pricing it's right. conservation pricing and very common yeah. so you can't reject i'm sure you can about if we had reduced the water rates back then, about how much more money we would have in our okay. No, no, I didn't think so. I mean, it was a very small reduction. Yeah. And this has been, you know, we were performing well for years. Right. And just, you know, very recently, since the 17, things started getting expensive and we started growing. Remember, we've got a 23% increase in people here in mm -hmm. That has cost us, uh, you know, time and energy. Expenses have gone up, but so has revenue. Revenue has gone up. It's just they're not keeping up with each other. Right. So by working a program, uh, like Mr. Donovan said, uh, he can help us through every year showing the cost uh, increases, and we can do that 4%, very similar to recology. They're very good at coming in. This is a business plan that you're looking at here. Just, you're running a small business. You set budgets, you set targets, you check in and you look at and you measure your your actual performance against the plan. That's what I do with my business. Thank you, Steve. I'm going to get out of here. I want to pretty much take the take the poll here. You're all on board that you got to do something. Oh, it's yes. just the question is how much and when. Yes, I think Chad's right. We should have another work session on this to talk about <laughs> how much and when. Right, and we are going to have if we have. Anyone available on the 15th or the 22nd of August? We'll have a work session then. Yeah. If you guys want me back, I'll be glad to come back. We can we can, we can play some what if or things like that. But there's not a lot of what if to be done here. It's pretty clear what has to be done. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with it. I'd even do it sooner than that. I'll give you the dates that I'm not soon. available. And any day that I'm in town, I'm ready for it. So I'd like to do that and then have the have this is something for a temple. Last thing, you gotta give it up to her. <laughs> crazy these last two weeks, three weeks. All she did is say yes, sir. May I have another? I mean, <laughs> uh, she had she was talking to the billing people. I they had the your utility billing company did some special analysis for me. She she ran, I got a, I got an email from her Sunday. She was working on this on Sunday. So you're lucky to have her. Yes, yes you are. are. We all know that too, I believe. Are you, are you our personnel director? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me know where you want to go. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We will. We'll see you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. All right. We're going to move on. Public communication. Anyone wishing to address the city council concerning items of interest not on the agenda may do so at this time. All remarks will be limited to five minutes per person. Requests to comment electronically must be submitted by email to the city recorder at info at cityofgearhart.com no later than 4 p.m. the day of the meeting. In-person attendees wishing to speak are required to sign in prior to the meeting. We are now going to go to the electronic world.
Eric Alpern, are you on? Yes, yes, I am. Hello, Mayor Kerry. Uh, your name and your address, please. Uh, Eric Halpern, 661 10th Street. Um, Dana brought this up in her counselor comments, as did Chad, but I just want to once again come before you all and call you out for good governance. Um, I'm speaking for both myself and my wife, Phoebe. Uh, we just want to thank you, uh, thank the city for the proactive 4th of July Good Neighbor messaging program. As I said, Dana went through that a lot in her comments, but to all of you involved, the council, the mayor, the city staff, the graphic designer, and as Dana pointed out, I guess quite a number of citizen volunteers, it really seemed to us to be a very thoughtful attempt to try and tamp down some of the undesirable elements of the 4th of July celebration. And whereas in the past, the idea of an ordinance to prohibit fireworks did not really get off the ground, uh, rather than just give up, uh, you listen to the needs of the citizens. And um, instead of a, instituting a policy involving sticks, you decided to try one with carrots. And uh, whether or not it was successful, I don't know yet. <laughs> but I think it was a really worthy attempt. Uh, the road signs and the yard signs were great. The message was clear and the email messaging was excellent. It was uh, very clear, it was very professional, it was very friendly, and it was very frequent, which I, I know some people probably got tired of seeing those things in their mailboxes, in their inboxes, but I think frequent messaging like that is very important. Keep putting that message before people. So, it, and even today you had a follow-up message thanking people and reminding us to keep the signs for another time. So I thought we, my wife and I both thought it was a very well thought out campaign, very well executed. And we just wanted to publicly thank you for your efforts to try and do what you could to make it a safe and enjoyable holiday for everybody. So thank you. Thank you, Eric. Yep. All right, next is Tom Tease. I think I'm going to wait until our water thing goes to public. All right. Because that's what I was going to talk about. All right. That's it. Okay. Jack Zimmerman. Yes. Uh, Jack, let, let, give us your oh, name and address. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Jack Zimmerman, 408 West Kirk. Um, First of all, the consultant report was highly informative and productive, and I, I found a lot of value in that report. Um, but I'm here to talk about the article in the Astorian where Gerhardt made certain statements about the negotiations with Florentin, and it seemed contentious. And I've seen a proclivity of people wanting to, you know, rechart rough water under old bridges. None of that's relevant today as far as some of us are concerned. It's now is the, the issue is getting a reliable water source on a long-term basis and on a good relationship. There are some of us who are very sympathetic to Warrington because they are providing an immeasurable service to you. They're allowing you to uh, fluctuate on your consumption, they, fall, they fill your uh, shortfalls of your own production. So they swing for you. Uh, they, they aggregate water for you. So they stand by. So I think things could be a lot worse with Warrington. They could become very creative with their rate making. I would hope that um, that the city would consider that if you look at the regional and the state conservation plans, the projections of available water in the future, I think it's 2037, is very problematic. So I would hope that the city would work to try to better the relationship with Warrington, so more importantly, to procure a long-term commitment out of Warrington to supply water. 
And the reason for that is, is it's reservoir water. And I would say that it would behoove the city to get the same quality of consultant that you did on your rate making uh, on geology, hydrology producing out of a uh, sand dune filled by groundwater rain. And I would say emphatically that you can find a very good case that you should not rely on sand aquifers on the leeward side next to the ocean, shallow wells, relatively low pressure according to Mark McFadden. There's a host of reasons that uh, that is not predictable water. The other item is, is that I think you guys pretty well made up your mind what you're going to do, but one year commitment just puts the city every year into the same position of having to negotiate with warrant. So, and we would hope that you would try to negotiate a higher priority. But, but as far as a customer, I think you have a bigger problem. In 1974, the city could, uh, submitted a comprehensive plan to the state of Oregon that stated emphatically that this system was old, decrepit, and in great need of replacement at an estimated cost of $5 million in 1974 dollars. But yeah, so, and I'm running out of time, you're gonna cut me off, I know you will. Um, <laughs> so you've had MOUs with Warrington saying that Gerhardt was gonna replace these reserves. And I think your consultant showed you very empirically that it's going to be very expensive to go out and buy water reserves. The idea that you're going to be able to do uh, additional water rights in light of all the state's concern on conservation and even the counties and the regionals. Um, I think at best, and I think Chad at one time said years ago that it would be uh, very unlikely we'll get any more water reserves. Maybe there's a hardship here that you can case. I don't know. But I think that's your problem. There is no plan to test the, the uh, integrity of your pipeline system. According to McFadden, maybe at best 50% of the pipeline has been, or the distribution system has been replaced over the last 30 or 40 years. So, we would hope you bring more attention to the integrity of the water line, especially in consideration of the unaccountable water that you're dealing with now that Mark McFadden says will take one and a half to two years to reconcile. Thank you, Jeff. Your time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Going on to written communication, everyone got a copy of the letter submitted by Robin Lane and the letter by Dottie Baker. Are there any questions about these two letters? They're very small, very quick. It was lovely. And uh, someone, Robin is talking about uh, the trees and the need to protect all our old growth trees. Any comments? No, ready, no late written? Correspondence. Yes, sir. We have no resolutions. We have no old business. We have no new business. Dana, I'm going to go to council concerns and you. Um, I think I'm I'm good right now. I, I... you're good. Okay. Okay, Sharon. I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. Preston. Um, I would like when we start talking about the the water and the rate increase and stuff like that that maybe we should involve the general public. Yeah. Okay. We can have a work session though so we can get our basics out yeah. and down. And then we can have a town hall on. Okay. And then we can all be there at the town hall and just talk to people and let them know what's going on. 
there will also be two public meetings, public uh, hearings. Hearings. Thank you. Um, during the process as well. Okay. 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 All right. I have no concerns. I'm glad we finally got that rate study done. And now we can move forward into the 21st century, 23 years and good. All right, I'll take a motion. I move we adjourn the meeting. Is there any discussion, Manny? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.